Are you making a nest down there? What are you doing? Are you going to come say hello? Gonna... <laughs> There's nothing there. Assume we'll look at this. <sighs> it has to be comfortable. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm in the mood to do an 8x8 eight eight canvas. I'm also in the mood to do some stuff with modelling paste, but I also want to play with stencils, but I'm also going to be playing with some of my new laser chips. Now these are the ink splat laser, or paint splat laser chips that I have in different sizes. So I have a kind of idea what I want to achieve. So let's just see whether or not I can translate what's up here onto the page down there. Who knows? So I'm starting out today with an 8x8 flat canvas and some modelling paste from the Galleria. This is Windsor and Newton and this is a stencil that was given to me by Eva from Eva LaVey Arts in Happy Mail last year sometime I think. So as you can see I'm spreading the modelling paste through the stencil uh, and I'm having to um, speed this project up to about 300%, about three times normal speed, um, because it is actually quite long. It did take me quite some time to create this canvas. Now, obviously I hadn't cleaned the stencil last time I used it, which is why you've got some contamination of color coming from the paint or whatever it was that was um, left on the stencil, probably ink actually, and that's why it's stained the modelling paste a little bit. I'm not bothered because I will be painting over the modelling paste anyway, so once it's dry it'll be fine. And just to fill those two little gaps, one in the top left hand corner and one in the bottom right, I'm just going to use the Typo stencil from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous just to add in a little bit of text through that stencil. So just to give it a bit more detail and a variation in texture. So just put in the excess modelling paste away and I'm going to grab my Medite um, paint splats. So these are MDF but it's special treated MDF, there's not as much nasty content in them. Uh, I'm just placing them directly into the modelling paste before I dry it. So the modelling paste is going to act like an adhesive. So once I dried the canvas, I decided I was also going to add in a couple of words. Now I'm just adding some PVA glue just to the back of these two MDF words. And I've got the word create and the word art as well. These are also available on my website to purchase along with the paint splats. So of course this PVA glue, once dry, will be transparent anyway, but I will be painting these. So um, it doesn't really make any difference if you get a little bit just showing through because it will get covered over. So once I've got them down and once I've got them secured and stuck down uh, and made sure I've got the words straight, I'm going to just give them a quick blast with the heat gun just to set that glue um, on its way to setting before I move on. So next up I'm grabbing my pot of white gesso from Indigo Blue and a spritz bottle that I've already partially filled with water and I'm going to add some gesso into the water in the spritz bottle. I want to create a whitewash, so a spritz whitewash that I'm going to use just to spray over the entire canvas um, rather than paint it which would take quite a while. So I thought spritzing would be quicker. I was wrong though. So once I'd created my spritz in the bottle and cleaned up the excess paint that I dripped everywhere, just give it a good shake and then I can begin to spritz all over the canvas. But as you can see, the gesso particles are too thick to go through the nozzle. So I end up having to keep releasing the lid every single time I wanted to use it. But it didn't actually work. So when I carried on, I persevered with it and I covered the entire canvas and then I'm going to grab my heat gun and then completely dry it and then once it's done, I decide that I'm probably better off just painting it with gesso anyway. So that's what I tend to, or that's what I ended up doing. So this is what the canvas looked like 
with the spritz, not as white as I wanted it. So I end up grabbing the gesso and then just painting the entire canvas anyway. So it's one of those long laborious processes. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit and then I'm gonna to jump to the end. So this is the canvas completely covered with the white gesso. So I'm gonna grab the heat gun and then make it completely dry before moving on. So now the canvas is completely dry. I've brought out my colours. The first one I'm going to use is the Periwinkle Blue from Ducrafts, which is the design objectives here in the UK. It's a very, very inexpensive acrylic paint, a bit like the Americana ones, similar in size too. So I'm going to be adding some pale pastel colours to the canvas. I decided that the colour palette that I wanted to use was going to be pastel, almost sugared almond kind of colours. So ice cream colours if you like. So I've got a, a pale blue, I've got a pale green and I've also got a pale pink. I'm going to add colour and I'm going to blend it through, I'm going to overlap it in different areas um, to get a kind of um, abstracty kind of splattery grungy look but using pastel colours. I know it doesn't really sound like it's going to work but I hope it does. Actually thinking about it, when you use pastel colours and you make it grungy, isn't that shabby chic? I don't know, possibly. Let me know in the comments below. So my first smattering of that periwinkle blue is done, so I'm going to grab the heat gun, give it a blast, and then I can add my second colour. So the second colour is soft green, again from the same company, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the green that I did with the blue. So coming towards the end of adding the first layer of green, I'm going to grab the heat gun, make sure it's all nice and dry, and then we can add the pink. And talking of pink, there it is, blush pink I've used. A nice, pale, subdued candy floss or cotton candy pink. So once again, I'm going to continue to do the same thing with the pink that I did with the blue and the green. But this time I'm also going to go over the words, the create art words as well. So just about done with that subtle pink there, that blush pink. So I'm just going to just go around just adding a few wisps here and there and then I'm going to grab the heat gun and give it a blast to make sure it's all nice and dry. So next up this is the Pantry White acrylic paint from Indigo Blue. It's a slightly off white colour and I decided I was going to just give it um, a little bit of a dry brushing just over the edges just to try and tone down some of that colour because I think the blue is kind of strong and so is that green. It's actually glowing a little bit. So I decided to add a little bit of that pantry white just to kind of knock it back a little bit. So once I'm happy with the amount of pantry white on there, I'm just going to grab the heat gun and give it a quick blast, make sure it's all nice and dry before bringing out some gold. So here's the gold paint. This is the Goldfinger Metallic paint from Indigo Blue. It is an acrylic. So I'm going to dry brush the gold around the canvas, catching all of the raised texture from the modelling paste and my laser cuts, so all the laser chips, MDFs. So as you'll see, I'll go around once, trying to catch as much texture as I can, and then I will completely paint the words create art in the gold.
So here's where I'm just adding that full complete layer of gold onto the wording. So I'm just going around catching the last few bits and it does take quite a while to build up this dry brushing technique with um, with the gold paint. So I've decided to use what the excess and just to add some gold splatters around the page to or on the canvas as well. So the gold was there, I've already got splatters in there, I might as well add some real gold splatters. So time to grab the heat gun, make sure it's all nice and dry and then we can move on to the next step. So the final layer I decide to add some titanium white so I'm going to dry brush the, this titanium white acrylic paint over uh, some of that texture as well. The gold started to look a little bit too brassy so I decide just to tone it down a little bit and also get some of that white catchment in the texture from the canvas too. So I think I've added enough of that white onto the canvas now, so it's time to get it completely dry. Once it was dry, I decided I wanted to add some more white splatters onto the canvas. So I've just mixed up a little bit of that titanium white. I'm just adding some larger white splatters around the page. And I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to do any more to this. Now I was deciding whether or not to add some black splatters, but <laughs> so I've grabbed my pen. So all I'm going to do now is just sign and date the back. And then I'm going to call it complete. So at the end there, I really had to resist the urge to add some black splatters to the canvas. Um, I don't know why, but I just thought that it could have done with them. But to be honest, I think it may have just spoiled it. I wanted to keep those kind of pastely, ice creamy, kind of sugared almondy colours in there without adding anything in that was too dark. You can just see that shine from that gold um, acrylic paint there. Um, so I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, I know it won't be to everybody's taste, but you know it's nice to be able to do something with colours that you tend to don't use very often. So you know, and those kind of ice creamy colours that I use there are definitely ones that I don't use very often at all. Particularly pink. Pink is not a colour I use very often at all. So it's nice to be able to step outside your comfort zone and try something different for a change. So like I said, it probably won't appeal to everybody, but I'm sure it will appeal to some. But I enjoyed doing it. And as I've said before, that's all that really matters. So um, if you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Share the video with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then please click that button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now. Thank you.